Mike and Deborah Scholes hope to set out on this impressive journey soon, crossing the Atlantic Ocean in a Rosier balloon. If all goes according to plan, they hope to take off by next week. Their former attempts were delayed by helium shortages, the COVID-19 pandemic. But now, here we are, three years later, the schools are ready to try again. And if they do it, they will become the first female balloon pilot and the first blind crew person to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Mike and Deborah are joining us today. Hey, welcome back to your morning. It's good to have you join us again this morning. Nice to see you. Good morning. Good morning, Lindsay. Thank you for inviting us. Okay, I have to ask where you're standing right now. Is that the balloon behind you? It is. This is the balloon basket. The balloon the basket. Balloon. Yeah. yeah. And it's called um, a rosier balloon, is that right? What's the difference between a hot air balloon and the balloon that you'll be flying in? So a hot air balloon is um, a burner and cold air that's warmed. Um, a rosier balloon is a gas cell at the top and then a cone that has cold air and a small airborne heater rather than a, a burner, true burner. Um, not quite as powerful, just to warm the gas. The idea is to warm the gas at night to keep the balloon level. You both have been very patient. You've tried to do this a bunch of times. It's been what, three years later. What will have to happen over the next week or so for you to finally take off? We'll need the weather systems to all align between the different forecasting networks, um, which is developing a steady westerly flow We'd rather like all this wet stuff that uh, New Brunswick has at the moment to move out to the Atlantic and get clear of us. And then we're looking for a steady westerly flow across the Atlantic to get us to Europe. Is the smoke impacting any of this for you? No. No. Okay. Not at all. Okay, that's good news then. So walk us through how this trip will work exactly. So um, we'll go to the takeoff. Field. We will lay everything out, prepare everything. Um, the whole process will probably take about eight hours. Um, we'll start to feed the helium into the balloon. Um, we have different people doing different things um, within that. And we will basically, when the suitable slot comes along, we'll launch. Um, we'll go up slowly to a certain altitude um, that our meteorologist tells us. And then we will do um, every eight hours, we will do um, radio and we will just fly hopefully safely across the Atlantic at varying heights, depending on the weather. It's a bit of a, a, an open question really, because no one controls the weather and until mm -hmm. we get that, we don't actually know. The meteorologist is going to be telling us if he sees a slot for the right direction at a certain height, because wind's direction varies with height. So he may say descend to 1,000 feet or climb to 15,000 feet. Oh, wow. But he can see it on his screens. So you get up that high to 15,000 feet. How long are you expecting this to take? I'd say five to seven days. Okay. Uh, knows which route we'll go. I mean, if we go up on the northern Great Circle up towards Newfoundland, Greenland, Iceland, it could take a bit longer. Right. What are you going to, what are you going to eat? We're going to eat dried food that's rehydrated. We've got a jet boil that heats up the water. Yeah. You pour it, mix it, leave it 10 minutes, and then you've got whatever the food is, be it puddings, be it uh, stew, be it cottage pie, curry. Yeah, or curry, too. I mean, it all sounds quite delicious. And then I'm assuming you have facilities that are going to deal with all the things. Yeah, you have yeah. to, right? That's the one. But, <laughs> I'm sure you get asked that quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I wanna... we just hold our breath. You what? <laughs> we hold our breath. <laughs> so we interviewed about you back in 2020. You told us a little bit about the preparation that goes into this at that time. Have you been doing more training over the years? Have you learned anything new in the last couple of years getting ready? Yes, we've been um, we've been to Germany and done some um, training with um, gas balloons rather than rosier. So you can't really train with a rosier because it's a long distance balloon and it's helium. Um, but you can you can do training with the um, hydrogen balloons. And you're In raising Germany. money too, right? Do you want to talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, we're raising money for Blind Veterans UK. Um, that was the charity that helped Mike when he lost his vision. I used to be Royal Navy, 
and mm -hmm. as a result, the Join Blind Veterans UK. Yeah. So we've got a small banner on the basket, and there's a link from our website, yeah. www.transatlanticballoonchallenge, mm -hmm. and people can go on to that site and make a donation if they would like to, to, to the Blind Vets. It's a very yeah. positive charity that helps ex-service men and women who've suffered sight loss to get on and achieve ambitions. Well, thank you for, and this is like, it doesn't get more ambitious than this. I have to ask you from a human perspective, though, I know you have all of the training, but are you nervous at all? Not no. yet, no, no. 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 It's quite no. calm at the moment yeah. because there's lots of, um, you're, we're still very much in that process. So yeah. going through the process of getting ready, I think maybe the nerves might kick in once we go out over the water. I think we'll wait till we've landed and then get nervous. Yeah. Listen, we're wishing you the best of luck. We hope the takeoff happens. Keep in touch. And listen, if you have the capacity and you're up in the air and you've got some time, FaceTime us. We want to see you en route. How about that? Nice okay. to see you both again. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much, much for Thank inviting you. us. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.